This is the Glycine Airman 17 Sphere. It has ties to aviation history, but it is a snarling wrist monster. Let's look at it. If you've clicked on this video, you might already know a little bit about the Glycine Watch Company. It is over a hundred years old. The company started in 1914, but they became a part of our culture when their airman model got popular with pilots during the Vietnam era. The Glycine Airman Sphere is a modern cousin of the original 60s models without their somewhat clever and a little bit bizarre pin wire hacking mechanism. I haven't seen any explanation as to why this model is called Sphere, I guess that's how you say it, but there seems to be a Swiss training platform for pilots and parachute scouts. I assume it has something to do with that. The bi-directional rubber topped 24-hour bezel with its own locking mechanism I think is unique to glycine. It works well for tracking a third time zone as long as you have enough light to see it. The rubber on the large crowns gives your fingers maximum grip and the crosshatch pattern on the one crown harks back to the original and reminds me of some of my favorite old divers. And at 200 meters water resistance, you probably could dive with it. The case is really quite well done and wonderfully slim. The lines aren't super sharp and the flats aren't super flat like a truly expensive watch. But I especially love the side contours and the very down curved lugs. And the little bit of matte finish on the tops of the lugs makes the case look just a little more expensive. The modified ETA 2893 movement is good, if not spectacular, as you would expect. The date snaps over nicely at midnight, and this particular one gains about 9 seconds a day, and the wonderful crown makes it easy to set. With the huge dial and sapphire glass, you have great visibility. Although I find it a little hard to read because the hour markers are small and the 24-hour numbers are relatively large. It's as if Glycine thought it was more important to figure out the second time zone than the actual current time. The loomed hour markers are pretty sad. They are so half-hearted that I am not sure why Glycine even bothered. Although the hands, while not fantastic, do glow much better than the markers. The bezel lock is solid and works great. I think it is interesting and really sets the watch apart. The, my particular bezel is pretty stiff and hard to rotate, and the ridges on the coin edges aren't particularly sharp to grip. To be fair, I hardly ever change it, so it might just need to break in a bit. The display back is pretty nice, and I like the rotor decoration. There are blue screws, but they are tiny and don't really add much to the view. But I think Glycine gets points just for trying. The leather band is really quite nice, well made and supple once broken in a tad. I think that black wasn't the best choice given the goldish tones of the text on the dial. Brown would have been much better. Since I'm an old brown shoe naval aviation guy, I think it would be just a bit more apropos. Now let's discuss size. This thing is a real monster. At 46 millimeters in diameter, this is definitely a big watch. The slimness and the wonderful downward arching lugs helps a great deal. But then the sheer length of the lugs undoes some of that. I find the watch wears just big enough that on my 7.5 inch wrist, I don't often wear it. It's a real wrist monster, and if you don't have a bigger wrist than me, you will find the lugs jut out too far and are rather annoying. So what did you think of this guy? I think if you need a GMT in your life, you like aviation watches with real history to them, and you uh, have a very, very large wrist, this may just be your horological huckleberry. Uh, we'll
October. Out.